50 degree day in March. <laughs> I tell you, times are changing, the weather is changing. But we thank God anyway for whatever he brings, amen? amen. Hallelujah. But most of all, today, praise God, we want to take a moment to say happy birthday to Mother Green. Amen? Hallelujah. What she say? She's 90 years old? Nine, nine zero. Or 90 years old. <laughs> Amen? You know, we, we, we talk about a blessing to get to be 90 years old. Amen? Hallelujah. I, I imagine she sees uh, a lot of things come and a lot of people go. <laughs> But to live to be 90, praise God, and I mean, God has really endowed you with some wisdom and understanding, praise God, amen? amen. Not everybody get to be 90 years old. Amen. amen. We were we looking at this year, I, I don't know, this year and last year, all these movie stars are leaving at 50s and, and 60s and, and 70s, praise God. Mother Green still, yeah, she's 90. You know, we... I, I think about um, Christmas time, praise God, amen, when I think of it. Because we, we get a card in the mail. And inside that card, she always send a check, praise God, amen. So we want to thank God for empowering her and, and enabling her, amen. praise God, to do what she can. You know, what, what I'm saying is she's 90 years old, praise God, right now. And all during the years, she's been promoting and supporting the church. And you got folks, praise God, who, <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, man, it took them 90 years, and they've been ignoring the church for 90 years. <laughs> but we thank God for, and we pray that God continue to give her grace and show his mercy and give her strength that she may keep going. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, if you would, help me. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for this time, this service. We thank you, for Father God, for these, your people. We thank you, Lord, for strength, for wisdom, and understanding. We thank you for watching over us and keep us, Lord. That we didn't let us suffer any hurt, harm, or danger. Now, Lord, we want to put those before you today that are ill in their bodies. Lord, those that are confused or disturbed in their minds and Father God those that are down in their heart because Lord we know you said bring them to you so right now Father in Jesus name we ask that you touch that you heal and you deliver today and set free right now which is our prayer we ask that you continue to lay your hands Father God on those that are ill in their body like Brother Earl and Sister Marilyn and Praise God, all those that are still sick. You know, Sister Cheryl, she's still going through, amen. And we pray, praise God, today for caregivers. For those folks, praise God, who are standing there, seeing to the needs of others, the ones that can't see for themselves. We pray, Father God, for Mother Wright right now, praise God, Mother Virgie, in her trials and what she's going through. And praying for all the newborns in this world today, amen. Our, our own grandson, Matthias, amen. And our brief brother Matthew had a child uh, just the other day. Don't know the name yet, amen, praise God. But I believe God is still doing what he's going to do. So right now, Lord, we thank you. And we praise you for all you've done and what you're about to do. But now we encourage you, Father God, to go into the hospitals, Lord, and raise them up from the beds of affliction. And those that are just can't make it right now, Lord, we ask that you provide a way when there is no way. Lord, keep us. Father God, strengthen us. Lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise God. Listen, I was, I was all set. I am all set. Praise God. Our, our lesson today, our message today is going to come from... The book of Philippians, amen, the chapter 3, verses 2, 12 through 14. The book of Philippians, amen, and Philippians, <laughs> Philippians, chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, amen. But I was getting ready to 
come and talk to you about that, and, and I will. I, I promise you I will. But um, I was looking in the book of Hebrews, and, and, and it just, not Hebrews, I'm sorry, the book of Exodus in the 16th chapter. Amen? And, and I, I was thinking as I was sitting there about Israel. Amen? And as they were leaving Egypt, and as they went out into the wilderness, praise God, and, you know, so many things came upon them. They got discouraged. And when they got discouraged, praise God, one of the things they said, praise God, is that I longed for the day, amen, when I was back in Egypt, when we were sitting by the flesh pots, amen, and we had food enough to eat. And, and, and we didn't worry about those things. And, and, and what happened was, praise God, see, Moses, you brought us out here. And things have gotten so bad on us that all we can do is think about how good we thought things were. Amen? And, and in our word today, praise God, we want to encourage you not to look back on the past, but the word tells us that we have to press what? Forward. Forward. Amen? Because, see, so many times, praise God, when we run out and we run into things and, and, and things start to hinder us and things start to bind us, the first thing we do, praise God, is we look back, praise God, and we try to remember things as they were. But if you can remember, praise God, when you were there, they weren't there as good as you thought. You know, it's time that we pull away from some of those relationships that we were in. You know, it's time that we got away, praise God, from some of those jobs that used to oppress us, amen? And the Word tells us, praise God, that we got to forget those things of the past, amen? And we have to press forward. What we do, praise God, we miss what God has for us now, thinking about the past. Amen? Amen? So what we're coming to tell you today, praise God, is nothing wrong with remembering, amen, but don't let it be the thing that hinder you today, amen? amen. Oh, hallelujah, amen. praise God, amen, amen, amen. So we get the time, praise God, we, we start thinking about, you know, it, it was, you know, I do it all the time, <laughs> amen, because see, when I was growing up, I didn't have to pay rent. I didn't have to pay bills. <laughs> Amen. And I look around sometimes when I'm, when I'm going through the computer, praise God, and, and I'm putting in that payment, Amen, for the mortgage. And I said, you know, all of this could have been mine. <laughs> you know, and we're paying the utility bills, praise God, and we think about those days when they say, well, you know, man, I, I was, what did they say? I was free to I was a fool. <laughs> didn't have a care in the world. But see, when I look back at those times, I thought about, Lord, I can't wait <laughs> until I get to be grown and on my own. Amen? And, and, and when I do, praise God, I'm going to be, but see, I didn't think about the fact that I'm bringing that past with me. That all those bills and things that I didn't have to pay are now going to become mine. <laughs> amen. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Let all the young folks say amen. Okay, that's good enough. <laughs> praise God. But, it, you know, praise God. Listen, we're going to ask you today, if you would, turn with us to the book of Philippians, the third chapter, verses 12 through 14. Amen. amen. And as she begin to read... Hallelujah. We ask amen. that you give ear and pay attention, amen, because God is really trying to tell us something. He's trying to take us someplace, amen. Amen. Go ahead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Hallelujah. What we're doing, forgetting those things that are behind. Yeah. Amen. 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 We're going to press, <clears throat> praise God, towards the mark of the high calling of Christ yeah. Jesus. Amen. We don't want to be hindered any longer, praise God. We don't want to let our past and the negative things that used to hold us down, praise God, continue to be a, a, a stumbling block for us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, you know, the Bible tells us, you know, we just need to forget it. And, and forgetting is a voluntary thing. You know, it's like somebody can hit you in the head, I guess, and you can get amnesia and you'll never remember it again. But see, I don't know about you. Remember, and, and maybe you don't, that people used to say, I'll, I'll forgive it, but I'll never forget it. <laughs> Amen. It's, I'm going to forgive you. But see, that thing will haunt you the rest of your life if you don't forgive it and forget it. <laughs> amen? And so we, 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 we get stuck, praise God, amen, and we, we can't get past what we can never get over. Amen? amen. And that's what we find ourselves today, praise God. We, we, we're trying to get past those things. So all we need to do is we, can, we can't get over it, but we need to set that thing aside. Because we can't let it be a stumbling block for us going forward. Amen. Amen. So Paul, praise God, he, he came, praise God, and he presented himself as an example to the church of Philippi. Amen. Uh, and, and not only that, praise God, they were, they were, they were going through some trouble. And, and he wrote a letter, praise God, from jail. <laughs> Amen. To warn them to look out for ravenous wolves, for people who were like, Dogs. I mean, in other words, don't let the world persuade you and lead you away from God. I mean, and he, he kind of likened his life to a race that we run. You know, like in the Olympics, praise God, you see they, 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 they run and they participate in all these events. Amen. And he was trying to tell them, praise God, that once you start forward, amen, if you take the time to look back, you lose. Amen? Because see, someone will pass you in this race because you spend all your time looking back. And the Bible tells us, praise God. He said, once you put your hand to the plow and look back, praise God, there's nothing more for you. So God is trying to warn us. He's trying to tell us today. He sent this message to Paul. And Paul said, I'm going to use myself as an example. And you know Paul, Saul, the great persecutor of the church. Yeah, man, he, he, I mean, you can't have church service, boy, when Paul was around. He'd run in. Yeah. Yeah, man, and he'll disturb the whole place. Paul went to the church and wanted a, a permit and a license, yeah, amen, to go out and hunt down Christians. Yeah, amen. But God saw something in him. Yeah, amen. And God changed him. And what he said is that Lord, when the Lord laid his hands on him in the book of Acts, praise God, and he changed Paul to a greater and a different person. Amen. So we at a point today, praise God, God is trying to tell us, amen, forget the past. Set it aside. Yes. Amen. amen. And look at the wonderful blessings that I have for you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're walking in a time, praise God, when folks, <laughs> you know, and I, and I imagine when you read this message, most people don't. Because it's frightening. Paul said, he said, he said, I pressed the wall to Mark. Amen. He said, even though I'm not perfect now, I won't be perfect until I get to heaven. All right. And, and a lot of folks will look at that and say, well, Paul, why are you trying? You won't be until you get to heaven. He said, but I pressed the wall that Mark. In other words, praise God, I'm going to lay hold on the thing that laid hold on me. He said, God, grab me his chamber. So in other words, praise God, I should strive every day to look to be more like Jesus. And that's what he came to tell us, praise God. We're not going to be there. But a lot of folks are telling you right now, that's a frightening thing to know that I can't be any more than this until I get to heaven. So why should I try? So we got people running around the street today, praise God. Killing the mass killings, praise God, amen. Violence in the house of God, amen. He says disturbances in the home. So a lot of people right now can't get along with their brothers or their sisters. Yeah. They can't get along with their neighbors, amen. 
God is trying to tell us that if you're going to start here, you know it's hard, praise God. Say, I hadn't talked to my sister in 20 years, but it's still your sister. Amen? So he said, put those things aside. You won't ever forget them. Those things are the things that are leading you in the life that you're going through right now. So in other words, praise God, we got to get to a point, amen, where we start sitting these things to the side and say, well, hey, wait a minute, you know, God, I'm sorry. He said, because I'm not displaying, praise God, the character that you put in me. Amen? I, I mean, Saul was a dreadful person. Some of the things that he did until Saul, praise God, had that trip one day down that Damascus Road, amen? Yeah. amen. And, and all he could see, praise God, was that light, and he could see nothing else anymore. But God took the opportunity, praise God, to call Saul in and make him Paul, amen? And when he did, praise God, he gave him a brand new life and a brand new way. So Paul was trying to say, praise God, he said, that's the life I need to seek after. That's the place that I want to be. That's the character that I want to be inside of me. So we should be like Paul today, praise God, to strive to be in that position, praise God, where the character of God, amen, just like Jesus, to be like me. He said, I want to walk like him. I want to talk like him. I want to be just like him. Praise God. I want to treat my friends and mankind just like them. I want to be part of my family, praise God, and let them see, praise God, that God is God and God don't change. Somebody need to get to the place today, praise God, that we set aside violence and say, well, hey, maybe, just maybe, praise God, that we can all get along. And I said, but I want you to know, he said, just like Jesus, hallelujah, or just like that issue and the place that we put us in, we striving. Amen? We striving for perfection. That means today, praise God, if I can't win you over, I have to try tomorrow to do even better. So Paul was trying to say is, stop looking at the past, be it good or bad. In other words, if things were good for you, amen, then, praise God, there was a thing that were just as bad. He said, but we can't let those things hinder us from doing good right now. Hallelujah. 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 I'm sure that there are some people in your life that have really made your life miserable at one time or another. Forgetting those things of the past. He said, I know you won't forget. He said, but we have to set those things voluntarily, set those things aside so we can have the issue, praise God, put away from us so we can have the impetus to go forward so we can try to do better. Amen? Oh, Lord, I tell you. And like I say, we're going back to Paul. Paul said he was talking to a church, and he wanted the church to be in a place, praise God, where they can do better than he did. Yeah. And, and, and what it said in 13, he said, I haven't reached that point yet. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He said, he said but I'm, I'm going to strive for it. Amen. I'm going to try to be better. He said, brethren. I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, I, I haven't gotten to that point yet. But this one thing I do, I got to forget those things. Amen? Yeah. That are behind. And I got to press toward those things that are before me. Hallelujah. Amen? If we don't do that, we're going to continue to run up against that brick wall. Amen? Amen? And, and, and I was talking to, praise God, when we were open, we talked about Mother Green, and as a birthday, and she's 90 years old. Can you imagine some of the things that she had to forget? Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and I said, well, Lord, I, that's all right. There. That, that, that's good with me. And, and then you get halfway down the street, and then the first person you see <laughs> is that person. That made you mad all those years ago. And the first thing he says, well, you, you're nice. You said, well, I haven't seen you in so long, you dirty lowdown. <laughs> but what he's saying, praise God, that we're going to run into circumstances daily. And if we live with that anger, if we live, praise God, with those emotions, amen, we're going to hinder what God has for us now. Amen? 
Hey, don't put it away yet. Don't put it away. I need you to go with me, praise God, to Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Amen. Don't, 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 don't walk away from it. She thought I was finished, I guess. <laughs> but, but we thank God, amen, amen, that God put it on Paul and Paul to show it, and he used him as an example. Praise God. And can you imagine that example, amen? I, I mean, the, the persecutor of the whole church. Hallelujah. Amen. But can you imagine he did it? You got Hebrews 12, Amen. 1 and 2. If we will, go ahead and pretend to read for us. Wherefore, mm -hmm. seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. We got to do what with them? Let us lay aside every weight Ooh. and the sin which does so easily beset us. Mm. And let us run with patience yes. the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Yes. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let Hallelujah. us run. Amen. We got to put us we got to voluntarily put aside those wastes and those sin that so easily beset us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I, I don't know about you, praise God. It, it's easy anything in the world to have a thought. But a bad one <laughs> popped right up in your mind. <laughs> Amen. But there are some things in life, praise God, that I would love to forget altogether and never, ever be reminded of them again. And I'm sure you've been in that place too, praise God, where there are some things that, Lord, I, I just want to put that thing down, never want to remember it again. But you set aside those weights and those sins that so easily so in other words, praise God, they may come back to mind. He said, but don't dwell in that place. Amen. If that thought pop up, let it go. Say, let it go. Let it go, it go praise God. Yeah. It's going to come back to you. The devil, that's his job. He's going to, it's, his, it's his job to remind you, to upset you, and get your eyes off the prize. He wants you to stumble in your race. He wants you to be hindered by what's going on in your life. Amen. He wants you, praise God, not to benefit from all the wonderful things that God has for you. You set it aside. Hallelujah. Who's, like we said in the beginning in Exodus, he said when Israel got out there, praise God, and they started to experience all the hardships of life, the first thing they did was blame Moses for bringing them back out there, praise God, and taking them away from that wonderful life that they thought they had. He said, but when they were there, praise God, they complained every day about what was going on, and they couldn't wait to leave, get out, get grown, and have their own house, and do what they wanted to do, praise God, and until they get out there, and once they got out there, praise God, they realized that where they were wasn't so bad at all. They thought. He said, but you can't live in two places one time. But he said, Lord, this is what we do, praise God. That Moses did us this way. He brought us here, and he left us here, praise God, experiencing all the things that we go to. He said, I, think I used to be able to eat when I wanted to. Come and go when I wanted to. Didn't have to worry about paying rent a bit. I didn't even have to mow the lawn. Now I got two lawnmowers. <laughs> one I ride on and one that wear me out pushing it. Amen. But I said, remember, I got to leave that behind. And I got to enjoy the fact that most people don't have one. I got two. <laughs> Amen. Ride when I want to and push when I want to. God is blessing us, praise God. And if I didn't learn that lesson then, I would have missed, praise God, where God has me now and all the wonderful things that he's given me. Come on, somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, praise God, because I chose not to live in the past, but to experience all the wonderful things that God has for us today. How many are blessed today right now, praise God? How many realize, praise God, that where you come from isn't going to hinder who you are. He said, what I used to be, praise God, God has changed me, and I'm not that anymore, praise God. I believe Paul, praise God, woke up, and he thought about it. He said, listen, I used to be a bad man, and I did some horrible things. He said, but I can't let it. Pity put me down. He said, but now when I think about it, 
when God transformed me and changed me, Paul said that same badness came along with me. See, I don't know about you, but Paul went through several shipwrecks. He said, but I didn't take the time to worry about doing that, praise God. He went through being beaten, being in prison, praise God. And out of all of that, the same thing that he used to do were being done to him even more. But he said, if I let those situations rule my life, praise God, I wouldn't be to the point, praise God, where I'm running in this race. The race that I was oppressed, praise God, when the Lord laid his hands on me, he changed my life. And when he changed my life, praise God, he realized that I'd rather be with him in the kingdom. He said, but since I can't be right now, God has laid it upon my heart that every day that I go through, praise God, Paul said, I'm gonna build a church here. I'm going to build one there. I'm going to talk to these folks over here. Tell them about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. Come on, somebody. Say all that he's done for me. See, we need to be reminded, praise God, that where we were, hallelujah, is where we were. Now we are here, praise God, and we can't be dictated to or oh, 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 should I say manipulated by where we were. Hallelujah. We're stepping out into a new life. We're going, praise God, into a new direction. And we can't do that, praise God, holding on to the past. And what they call it, dragging that baggage. You ever been to the airport and you see folks coming and going? Everybody got a bag. It's just dragging it. It's just holding it. Going left and going right and they're being hindered. Dragging that bag. So we need to let that baggage go, praise God. We do like my daughter. She get that thing out the car. She go over to that valley and say, here. Take that. And then she walks through the terminal. Going to her plane, she left all of that baggage behind. In other words, said, devil, if you want it, here it is. <laughs> you take it. He said, but I'm not going to let it hinder me. I'm not going to let it make me miss my flight, worrying about having to drag that thing through the airport. So we got some baggage in our lives it may not be the black suitcase but that hatred Woo. that animosity that language that type of life that we're living God said if we just take that thing and leave it behind Hallelujah. 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 What's, what's that little, what's that little movie we saw with Pumbaa? <laughs> Lion King. Boy, that little dog was smart. What he was saying, take that baggage and leave it behind. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we got to start leaving stuff behind us. We got to stop letting our past hinder our present. And Lord knows, hindering our future. Amen. See, <clears throat> young folks, old folks, middle-aged folks, we all have baggage. Amen. And we get to the point, praise God, where God is trying to show us, let it go. He said, let it go. He said, I take care of you. Amen. So Paul, as he preached to the church, amen, and, and, and you know the example that Paul said, but he was saying, praise God, I'd rather live this way 
Amen. Didn't waste my life <clears throat> worrying about who I persecuted in the past. So, so I imagine after Paul got saved, you know, he has a lot of folks that didn't want to believe him. Amen. They don't want to have nothing to do with him. Thought he was a traitor, a sneak in disguise. Amen. So Paul had to convince folks that I've changed, that God got a hold of me. Amen. And once he did, praise God, I'm no longer the man I used to be. So Paul's life was built on work and work and working in the kingdom. Praise God. That he would bring in just as many people as he took out of this world. So what he's saying is our job today <laughs> Amen. It's to reach out and bring folks into the kingdom. But we can't do that until we do like Hebrews say, that we, you, set aside. So when he says set aside, that's a voluntary thing. Amen. So in other words, praise God, you can't go around worrying. You have to dismiss those things that are hindering you those things that are holding you down. Hallelujah. I know, I, I know where we're going with this today. You know, it, it's, we don't want to hear that. You know, it, it, nobody, nobody do that any longer. That's why he said it's voluntary. And if you want to enter into the kingdom of heaven and walk with Jesus, it, it, it's no longer, man, you have to do, it's mandatory now that you have to do these things. Oh, man. So, the church need to get back to preaching. Amen. And teaching that the Bible said there's only one way into heaven, and that's through Him. Amen. So, if you say, well, I'm Catholic, they tell me something different. You lost. There's only one way in heaven. It's through him. Amen. So if you worship your furniture, you can't make it. If you worship the TVs and the cameras, you're not going to make it. Amen. So we got to get to the point, praise God, that all this old knowledge that we have, we got to seek new. Amen. We got to seek understanding in the word of God. The Bible tells us that we have to study this word. Amen? And in this word, praise God, we had to get an understanding of what's going on. Like I told you before, I was sitting there, and I came to Andre this morning, and at least three things changed about my message this morning. Because you never quit learning. And I know my wife saw me this morning. I walked out. I walked out. I had some papers. I said, from the time that I leave in the morning, and I start studying on Wednesdays, <laughs> on Wednesdays, man, until I get here, I got a piece of paper. I got a Bible, praise God. And I'm looking for an understanding of what the Lord has shown me. Amen. So if you figure that takes a lot of time, well, it does. But, you know, I, I, I don't want to be out there wondering and miss. <laughs> I don't want to miss my ride. <laughs> okay. Now, if you understand that, I don't want to miss my ride. Amen. So if this is what it takes, then this is what it's going to take. I mean, I, I don't have time to hate people. Don't have time. Because I'm studying too many other things that tell me not to hate people. <laughs> Amen. You don't have time either. Now, again, Mother Green had 90 whole years so far. And we pray God bless her with many, many more. Amen. Amen. But even in those nine years, I mean, if you ask her, she'll tell you, I didn't have time to worry about it. Amen? Now, I don't know about you, but how many of you, whatever age you are, praise God, you can look back at yesterday and say, Lord, how where did time go? Time's running out, folks. Amen. And we, might be not, we might not be able to physically see it. And, you know, we, praise God, go through some things in our life. 
what God is trying to tell us, praise God, amen, then we need to walk with him. And if we walk with him, time becomes irrelevant. He said, because I press toward the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ. He said, those that run, they're going to run for what? The race, they run for a prize. And that prize, praise God, is your heavenly home. And I know, praise God, right about now, praise God, a lot of us are thinking about it. Say, well, you know, it is Sunday. Well, you know, we can catch some football. You know, the club open at 6 on the Saturdays or whatever. But the thing is, no, not, not you. We talk about you, but there are some folks, amen, that b- before they get to Sunday, they spent Saturday running in the clubs, amen. So we ain't got time to hear messages like this. We don't want it, amen. But the Bible says in Hebrew, you set us, you set aside it. You. You know, your friend can't, the preacher can't do it for you. Amen. The pastor can't. He said, you set it aside. Those things that so easily beset you, those sins that hold you down and hold you back. Amen. And they got a, they got a race to run, folks. Yes. You don't want to lose this one. You don't want to lose this one. And I want you to know, praise God, in every race, well, in, in every worldly race or a carnal race, you know, only one person can win. Amen? Amen. And you got to run like you're going to be that one person. Amen. Amen? Come on, somebody, tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What else will say? Tight, but it's right. Yeah. Amen. We, we're getting to the point now, praise God, that we're, we have to... Um, we have to be aware of where we are because this world is losing its mind. Amen. A lady came to me yesterday and she said, I need for you to be careful, Pastor. I said, why is that? She said, I read a story the other day. She said that people are going out and getting fentanyl, the most dangerous drug in the world, and they're sprinkling it on door handles. Oh, Mimi, you see, Mimi says she heard about it too. They're sprinkling it. You're too big. So what I'm saying is you got to start going back to wearing gloves. Amen. So whatever you touch, you know, you better run up there and blow it off first or something. But folks, I mean, you know how expensive that stuff is? To go out and to purchase it just to harm somebody. And the folks that don't die from it, they get severely ill from it. Amen. And, and, and every day is a mass shooting. Every day. But see, what I'm saying is the world is imploding upon itself. We're tearing ourselves down. Amen? And see, that's not the race that we need to be in. There's another race being run on the other side of town. Praise God. Well, we put that down, and we headed for the kingdom. Amen? And folks have realized that that's what we need to be right now. Come on, somebody. Tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, Lord. So today, praise God, forgetting those things of forgetting what is behind, praise God. Philippians 3, 12 through 14, amen? Hallelujah. God wants us to keep moving forward. Amen? He don't have time to look back. He told Moses, hey, he said, Moses, don't, don't tell me about him. He said, tell him this, keep moving forward. And in doing so, praise God, they're going to reach the prize that I have in store for them. Come on, somebody say, hey, Amen. We thank God today, praise God, for another opportunity and another time that we get a chance to come before him and pray for those that are sick. Pray, praise God, for those that have have disturbances in their lives, amen. And pray for our families and our kids, praise God, amen. And children, pray for your parents. You know, it's easy. (laughs) It's easy, praise God, amen. I, I, I thank God for my mama now. Amen. And she took the time to raise us. I, I, I never knew where she was getting the money from. Amen. And I know there's nobody showing up to the door with guns and, and not have to take it back. Praise God. But she took care of us. And, and, and it, it gives me now at this point, praise God, while I'm taking care of my family, I want to take care of them just as well as she took care of me. Now, I think if we put that principle ahead of all of us, praise God, we'll run this race. We run it well. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody say thank you. you Hallelujah. We thank God. Amen. Listen, now to him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to that blessing, praise God, that power, 
that's in us, praise God. God has already bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord. Come on, praise God, and consider yourself dismissed. Amen? Amen. Amen.